darling old ancient wisteria tree. Help me do that as my husband, John. Hello. He helps me get these lessons to you by uh, really turning the equipment on, uh, making sure everything goes, switching the camera, zooming in on action, checking sound, and kind of doing everything that makes this a show and not just an imaginary day in my head. Mm. Right, because other than that, I'm just talking to myself in the room. No cameras, <laughs> nothing works. It's a moment. But for this, I get to teach you art at home all over the world, wherever you are. I want to really welcome you to my classroom. I'm so excited to have you here. Today's canvas is a 16 by 20. Um, that's kind of the smaller size of the wall canvases that we traditionally think of. But it's still a pretty good, wonderful size. It looks good in your house, looks good in your sofa. And we've been doing 16 by 20s. On Saturdays, I've been loving that journey. Um, I have a wish and intention for you guys, which is may it grow deep roots and have a long life like this tree. I thought that was very philosophical today. That is. Um, I do hold, not hold have. Just a second here. What? I gotta hold on just a second. Oh. Let me get that camera back over there. I was trying to. Do... Okay, there you go. So I'm gonna have some fun today. I'm gonna be playful. You can see the colors that I use in. Oh, your your mic is cutting out for a second. Okay. It is having trouble. Oh, it's... the whole intro? No, no, no. Just now. I've oh, been just noticing now. that we've been like having. Not the whole uh, intro. Cause... No, no. It was just, uh, I, I think we may have a bad uh, it uh, channel select. But it's okay. We're good. I just, Are we good now? I jumped it. I think so. Okay. Let us know if we're good. Um, see? Live. Live. Fixing mics on the fly. Can you hear me say fixing mics on the fly? Let John know how the sound is. Um, so if you check the description down below. Or our website, theartripper.com. The traceable's there. You can do this on a smart canvas. You can use the traceable. There's also a simplified grid. I'm going to break down every part of the process here. And the colors that you see in the descriptions are the ones that I'm using just for the year of 2021. I've used them in the past and previous years, but I've solidified that list down into its own group. I'm going to reset your mic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and have you come over here for just for a second. Hey, I'll see you in a minute. Two seconds. Should we? Do, do, do. We're gonna, I'm going to have to give you guys a little music for a second while I reset her mic because what happened I've got her muted because what's happened is, is that it's got a signal inside it and sometimes what happens is that as I'm resetting it right now it gets a bad channel and so if there's a bunch of uh, like uh, communications going on here uh, sometimes it can cause problems so there we go there we go now she's coming back. Are you there, Cinnamon? I don't know. Am I here? I, so much better. Is it? It is. Do we, we really to... need to redo this because this intro is so crazy? People that don't know us are going to click away. They're going to be like, just... this woman has no sound. You had sound. What it was is that just for a second, it, it I could hear it, and uh. it just jumped channels, and then it cut out for a split second. I'm yeah, hearing fine. squeaky chairs. That's her. You're fine. <laughs> We're live. Hi, sweetie. <laughs> Good to see you. You got your Pokemon cards? No, we're live. I'm having this conversation with you and several hundred people. Ah. <laughs> that was worth the face I got. It was a good face. Thank you for that face. Mm. <laughs> my daughter, like my mother is crazy face. That gives me, uh, gives me deep joy for the day. So the first thing that we're going to do to paint this gorgeous painting is get a whole background in. So if John can throw up a step one. Yes. Give me just a second here on step one. Step one is a very good step. This it is. is the step that lets us begin the journey. It, I'm not, it's not letting me do it, though. You know what? This is just one of those days where everything is just broken. The step sheet is just not It's because we went to McDonald's and the universe is punishing us. I knew that that chicken sandwich would not go by with no punishment karmically. Yeah. That's what happened. Here, let's look at my palette while you... Oh, so you do that and I'll get that I'm going to put some background colors out. So I'm going to start the background of my painting with a little bit of phthalo blue. I'm going to also put out uh, titanium white here in the center. Now I'm going to want a very, 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 very light blue. Right? And I just want a really, really light blue. And I'm going to add to kind of gray out the phthalo blue so I have the phthalo to pop elsewhere. I may pull out some ultramarine here. I'm going to have some ultramarine blue. I don't really work with my purples unless I have some ultramarine blue in the kit, right? And let's put in some quinacridone magenta. I'm going to also put out the tight knit yellow. 
This is the PY53 that is also sometimes called Naples Yellow Light. Huh. So, like, no, this one's light, Naples Yellow. Sometimes it's Naples Yellow Light. Sometimes it's Naples Yellow Green Hue. And they just have a lot of things that they like to name it. And I just let them, you know, do their thing. I'm also no. going to put out some Burt Sienna. You can see that's going out. That's going to be for the Barky Bark. And I can put out some Deoxazine Purple. Always a very good per a color if you're going to be doing a big purple tree. And then I imagine I will use Mars Black because we've got a lot of Barky Bark to think about. I don't know if I'm going to bother to get the Cad Yellow Medium involved or the Thalo Green because I don't think it will be intrinsically necessary. The palette seemed really crooked today, babe. Does it? I'll fix yeah. that in just a second. Okay. All right. So, so. what we're going to do is we're going to paint the whole background using a very big brush. And I'm going to show you a different trick for doing this. Um, then, so, you know, you've got the one where you dip the brush in water, get the excess water off, and then bring it over to the canvas and brush it. We're going to show you a different way of doing that. Okay. So I'm going to take a mister. Do, do, you, so you keep saying, all right, like I oh. need to stop. No, no, you don't need to. Oh. I've got your, uh, your uh, step up here that I'm working on. Okay. All right. So I am using this mister to pre-wet the canvas. So instead of bringing moisture to the canvas, I've got a little bit of moisture on the canvas. That's going to allow me to wipe out my wonderful intentions and words for you guys, right? But it's also going to let me kind of get the flow going on the canvas. Now, this is a big cutting brush, kind of like looks like a house brush, right? I'm misting it instead of necessarily dipping it in water. That's another way to control how much water. So you can dip in water and then create a damp brush or you can add a little water to it with a mister. I like to show you guys different ways to get things done. And the reason is I'm taking titanium white and I'm brushing it across. <sighs> wow. <laughs> Woo! Titanium yeah. white brushing it across, up and down. I'm just making sure that there's a nice thin coat on the canvas, All right? Then I'm going to get the smidgiest smidge of phthalo blue onto my brush. You can see on the tips of the bristles. If I need to, I'll get it over here into the white too. And I'm going to just very carefully, kind of in a little cross-hatching way, put a light blue sky up here. Okay. Oh, I've, had, I've got your step ready, by the way. Did you? Yeah. I'm oh, sorry. wonderful. Sorry, <laughs> I, was, I, was like, I, I was just so distracted by what was going on. I was like, watching, watching, watching. I mean, can I get that up for you? Yeah, might as okay. well. <laughs> there it is. There is that step one. Step I, one. I, so. There you go. I apologize. <laughs> I'm going to continue I, to get some blue on here and get into my white paint. We're just going to go through and we're just going to brush that through. It's a very light color, right? Because the, everything behind this tree is pretty light. And you'll notice it's okay that it's not like a smooth sky. We've got so many leaves and so much going on. It's really just about getting a wonderful color behind everything. The thing I don't love about bigger brushes is they take up so much room on my palette with how they move the paint out. And sometimes it's nice to have a smaller brush just for that reason because it doesn't move the paint everywhere. But again, it's always good to know the different ways that you can do something. This particular modality will help you with those canvases sometimes that uh, have little beads and bits of the paint just canvas keeps showing through no matter what you do. Mm -hmm. Now I don't, yeah I do. I have my easel, oh, my uh, hair dryer over hair here. Right there. I'm gonna dry it and then quick do one more fast coat on it. Sounds good. Okay. By the way, everybody thinks this is pretty good. They're, this is, just fine. We're live. We're live, and they're loving seeing it's you free. and doing we're this. It's free. We're live. It's free. <laughs> Dude, I didn't even get my hair fully dry. <laughs> this is that day. <laughs> so, guys, thank you. And you know what? I'm gonna say it's just one of those days where we're gonna we're gonna work through and make sure we get you guys this video live because we love doing this. 
more than you know. And so thank you for being part of our family and hanging out while we do this. And, you know, even on the days when it's less than perfect, we appreciate your, uh, your support. So thank you guys for being with us and hanging out. And, uh, oh, don't forget, check in the link in the description down below for all of the things that you might want to do. The informational stuff, you know. Uh, traceables, website location. Don't forget to click the subscribe button if you have not already. It'll help you get notifications when we go live. Um, let's see, what other things should we know about? Oh, we have, oh, there's a curl at Capro coming up. If you don't know about that, you should definitely check out the website. Uh, she's back. There she is. Hello. Hello. So okay. I'm gonna put out some more white paint. White paint. I'm going to put out a little more white paint. And we're going to just hit one more coat on there so we have a nice beginning. That seems good. Acrylic paint likes to stick to acrylic paint. Yes, it does. It really does. And that can be in your benefit as the beginner, right, where you're letting a little bit of it stick to itself. I'm going to just brush another layer on here. And you can see the second layer just adds a dimension. So this time I'm just getting a little bit of blue. And you just let it go in. And you want it to just be light blue, variants of light blue. Light the reason blue. that's kind of nice, and it doesn't matter if you have a uniform blue, but if you can pull off a slight variance, is the canvas peeks through the leaves, right? The canvas is peeking through the leaves, so having a nice blue beginning that's peeking through gives you a great start to work from. Just a little bit of multi-directional kind of diffused color. It uh, keeps you from worrying about where the lights are coming from. I'm going to make sure I rinse my brush out because you don't want to Leave paint on your brush, do you? No. So you take that as a picture, John, and we'll call that step one, and I will For sit my sure. coffee and try to reset ah. from our beginning. Okay. Which was so rough. It was. Whoa, you know man. And it's, you know, shit. Do you talk about the artist's journey? This is part of the artist's journey. Look, whether you're at home in your, uh, in your own space, in your own studio, painting a painting, or whether you have a live YouTube show, no, I do. You do too. Whether you have a live YouTube show, um, the idea that things will go perfectly all the time is uh, not going to come true. <laughs> it is a fallacy. And you don't want to set a condition in your life that things have to be perfect or flow perfectly or never go awry for you to feel comfortable and confident in your art space. Because the art space it's about being there in process. Sometimes the canvas doesn't pay, take paint well. Sometimes a technique doesn't work. Sometimes your water cup spills. Sometimes your kids come in. There's a lot of stuff that can interrupt our creative time. And a great skill, a way to think about being an artist that you can have is to realize that there are going to be bumps and you don't have to feel like completely blissful every minute of your painting to enjoy the overall experience of your painting. Like this was a rough beginning, not having our stuff ready and things breaking and sound being off. That's rough. It is hard to reset from that. But by the end of this, I'm going to feel great, right? Because I'll have done a painting and that will have been fun and I will enjoy that very much, <laughs> you know? So realize that things aren't all about just the smoothest smooth moments in the world. I do think I am going to put out phthalo green, uh, I didn't get a yeah. picture printed either, so I've got to find another way to see one. So I, I am going to put out some phthalo green, but it's really not going to happen until the end. It'll happen a little bit on the trunk and in a few of the downward vines, but I don't really need it yet, so I don't have it out. Can I ask you something? Yes. Are we ready for a step two? We're ready for a step two. Look at All that. Right. So in step two, I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to grab this uh, number six round. It's a Cambridge. It's a hog. Um, it's different than some others because it doesn't have like, and I might get this one out. See how this one has a really kind of carved point? 
This one's pointed, but it's not as pointed. Um, you could do either of those brushes. You could do this. If you want to throw other brushes in your paint like I just did, you could do that. Uh, <laughs> you could do a number four round. Oh, look, I'm paint got in here. I am having a day. I'm not going to reset. I'm going to persevere on, but I will own it. I'm having a day. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, you know. All right. So I'm going to take a little bit of my brown and black. And I'm going to come here. If you imagine that the canvas is divided in half, I'm going to come over just a little bit from the halfway point. And I think I'll come over here, you know, about this far over. If you're looking at measurements, I could probably give you those exact measurements. Like right around the 5 inch mark and just about just past the 12 inch mark is where I'm going to be doing that. I have this wonderful tree that bends through and comes up. And I'm going to just enjoy that line. I'm going to just enjoy that line. And I'm going to give myself another little bend. This one does some interesting things. It's got some wonderful little twist to it that you can talk about. And I can sketch those in loosely, even though I know that I'm going to be playing with this twist and this gnarling just a ton, ton, ton. If you want to pull that back, you can. I think that's a nice, like, extreme bend. So now I know where my trunk is. I know where I don't have to worry about putting in um, purple. I don't have to put all my purple leaves here because yeah. the trunk is kind of here. So that's not going to be really necessary. You know, not, not necessarily needed per se, as you might. Now, you're going to want to do some of this with bigger brushes just because, you know, you want to be able to um, cover a lot of area in a short amount of time. Yeah. And I will just use, this is just a bigger version of that. See? But I like a rounded shape. This is a number 12. These are hog. You can get these in a lot of lines. I have them in the Silverstone I like. I have them in a lot of ways. And we're going to just make a very, very, very light so light purple. And I'm going to come here and I'm going to just make little dashes at the edges here and come up with little zipping touch strokes. These are just little zipping touch strokes. I can piece together You know, uh, even more delicate tips. But you can see this is a pretty big brush, and I'm not having a hard time getting delicate tips down here. I'm zooming in to see those delicate tips. And this just actually really beautiful. The dioxazine over yeah. the phthalo blue just is a lovely color. It really is. Sometimes I'll come back in with lighter colors. You can see it's I've got a big brush. You know, you could do this with my cat's tongue if that's what you had, right? I'll show you that with this. You had a, or a filbert. I don't want you to think that you're stuck with, you have to go buy a brush, right? We can do this stroke with several brushes, can't we? Well, you certainly can. So it's really about the motion of the brush. You don't have to have the particular tool. I'll always tell you what I'm using and why I'm using it, but you don't have to have it to make your experience work. This is a bit of a busy bit of kit filling this all in with these little leaves. Now, what is it we used to say? The stroke is in you, not in the brush. The stroke is in you. It's not in the brush. This is super duper, duper, duper true. I've and also come found up here and purple. Since you're going to be purpling for a while. I'm going to be purpling for a minute, man. All this, all the way up. You know solid me. going up. We're making this stroke solid through this whole thing. When in doubt, make dad jokes. <laughs> Always. But I found you have to be careful about making stroke jokes. Oh, okay. yeah. Or wood jokes. <laughs> or ball jokes. jokes. Yeah, there's a bunch of things that you organically say in art <laughs> that taking out of context sound really wrong. It's like, whoa, they changed the rating of our video. <laughs> they have, actually. 
I've had to go back and get reviewed and be like, no, I didn't say anything that interesting. I promise. We were. It was an art technique. We were working wood. (laughs) (laughs) I don't need to open up an OnlyFans. I'm fine. Ah. (laughs) Wouldn't that be funny if I had to go on OnlyFans because, like, the automatic uh, (laughs) filtering system wouldn't let me say regular art terms? (laughs) I would be over there going... Nothing exciting is going to happen, but we're going to use regular painting terms, which are banned everywhere else. <laughs> There's always Twitch. Oh, there is always Twitch. There's always Twitch. And Facebook. And Facebook, Facebook does not Instagram. care. Instagram. Facebook has not had the FTC really come for it yet, so it's right now uh, <gasps> pretending like it doesn't care. <laughs> that's, that's the best. That policy. will change the minute, the minute the FTC uh, comes for them. And then they'll be like, did you target ads to children? <laughs> And they'll be like, no, we targeted ads to the children's grandmother, so you can just... Now, Chantel was asking, you can, You just demonstrated this. You can use your cat's tongue, really mm-hmm. any brush for this. this that's yeah, fine. I'll use that. You know, you can use... If you use... Uh, 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 here, I can do it with a bright. So say what you have is a bright or a flat or something, right? Like here's a number 20 Traxtora, and you've just got, say, a square brush. Get it wet. I might have not rinsed that one out last well last time since we painted... Mm. Right? I would just come here and see, it'll do it. Everything will do it. A number at Cambridge, um, when you're, if you're using a square and you want to get that type of stroke, you've got to come in on the corner. That's how you get that from, because you wouldn't get it from here, but you can get it from the corner. So there's always a way to get there. Feel free to go for it. These are distant, behind, far away little leaves. And what's nice about these little bits that we're going to do all through here before we get into our big twisty tree is that um, when we come up and we do the very bright, saturated front flowers, these little distant flowers will feel so far away. They'll be like, do you remember when we were in the back of the painting? And the painting is going to be like, yeah, but nobody sees you now. <laughs> Sometimes I have more white. At this stage, it's nice to vary it up because as these plants have light come through them, the amount of purple that they have Mm. will absolutely change. And what an easy way to start, right? Yeah. Every once in a while, you see me dip into a little bit of water and I get a little bit of dioxazine. You can see when it's uh, thicker, and heavier in the pigment, it tends to bias almost like a pink on there, doesn't it? Against the blue, the diox really shows its red bias. You can see it there. And it's, it's because the turquoise is so vibrant the thalo blue background is so vibrant that it just causes that purple to shine so they're really ruth was uh, no it was uh ashley was saying i'm really glad we could see how close you're using that brush because it it helps her understand the principles of how to hold the brush and what to do by being able to see your brush. Directly. Okay, actually, I'm holding my brush wrong. <laughs> you are? Yeah. For the easel, technically, I should be <gasps> back <laughs> here at the back of the brush. Oh. I got up on it. Very. Thank you for reminding me. I've got to set a good example. But That's I am funny. holding. The brush should be held further back. The reason why you hold this brush further back, you actually hold back here. When you're working at a table, you would hold in this range. Like if you're sitting at a table Uh and you have a short handle brush, you definitely work it like you would think a clig pen or any of those. Yeah. But when you're at the easel, you're supposed to rock back to the back of your brush. Oh, so you can see. That's why it is. And, and, and you will see one of my very favorite artists online on earth ties a bunch of brushes together (laughs) like he's Monet and gets across the room with his weird wiggly brush of (laughs) machination. Well, well, you know, I can understand that. Like if you want to be able to like, paint from that far off perspective well you're gonna need a brush stick yeah and so 
what do you do? You get a brush stick. You get a brush stick. And I'm not a brush stick user, but I can see it. You can see it just layers up. It's a bit of brush stroke. It's a bit of it. We're not going to be sorry we did it. We are not going to be sorry at all. Yeah, Tammy says it seems like you'd have less control by holding it that far out. You actually have a bit more control. Um, the brushes, when they're well balanced, uh, allow you to control it. It just takes a minute to get used to it. It also, you'll see artists do this thing where they're like, nit, 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 and then they'll go, eh. <laughs> because the, the far rocking back also makes you think a little bit more about the placement of your stroke. You know, this, and the uh, painting is a total. As I come up to the top, I will be a little thicker and heavier handed with the stroke, with the textural kind of scaling of it. That's because these will, you know, it's going to be behind stuff. And I may pull some branch out this way. I may not, though. I have not made up my mind. Because remember, in paintings, we get to edit, don't mm -hmm. we? I'm kind of up, because I'm up close, I rock up the brush. When I'm close to my canvas, I tend to rock my hand up the brush. I'm going to put out a little more white. White is going to be a big color used in this particular painting. In Lots of white. Particular one. Particular. Like purple? Like purple and white. Lots purple. of it. Could you see that coming? I, I foresaw <laughs> the purple and white with a touch of brown. Yeah. That was my predictor. I did not see the blue. You know, I, I you whenever know. I'm doing wisteria or things, I'd like to have a little ultramarine blue there, and I like to have a little quinacridone so I can warm or cool the purples on the up front. What, what about the yellow? What's, is that the highlight? Um, I can put it into my pinks. All right. Since we're, I want to just have it there in reserve for drama. We're deep in step two, so I figured I'd ask questions. Ask about questions, man. We got lots, so many little layers of layers purple. of. Did you see this tree? So, in other exciting news, did you know that Alberta got a beautiful sky show last night? I did not know. Did they have uh, northern lights? Meteor. Oh. Did, was it the one that almost hit us that they no, didn't see? <laughs> no, this okay. was a different one. Man, I'm just like, the world needs to stop. <laughs> I cannot anymore. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but they like at first you're like, tell us everything. And then you're like, don't tell me anything. <laughs> so if there, are any, uh, if there are any folks that were up there in the uh, up north that saw that beautiful sky display last night, there was a big blue. Ksh, and by that I mean... A meteorite exploded in the upper atmosphere with a large, uh, I guess it was a, a near nuclear blast uh, explosion. So it could be seen all across North America. Well, up there in the Canadian parts of it, at least. I'm coming over and doing little smaller strokes with this big brush. And I know that these will be behind here. I will come back and probably keyhole some very bright, sparkling sky colors through here, but I'm just really enjoying getting this first layer now, in. Are you just jumping around there adding highlights? I'm, I'm adding different values. Like, so sometimes I'm going in and I'm adding a little more white to the mix and getting it more pink. Then if I'm here and I'm like, oh, you know, we can't really see you, I might come back with some darker. So are you just creating some sort of balance here? I am. <laughs> am I not teaching today? <laughs> yes, I am creating else. When John asks me questions like that, it's a good indicator that I may not be explaining everything I'm supposed to. Well, you know. Yes, I am creating balance. What I'm going through is I'm going through and I'm finding spots. I'm changing up size and value, making sure that we have nice coverage. We also want to make sure that not every brush stroke is the same size. Right, that we have bigger and smaller brush strokes. As they come to the bottom here, right, they are maybe going to be a little more small and furtive, but we've got to hmm, 
kind of weave them up. So I'm just trying to make sure we've got a solid but varied background of leaves. Ah, so you wouldn't have necessarily follow exactly brushstroke for brushstroke what you're doing. I wouldn't. What I would pay attention is, is that as you come down to the delicate ends of the vines, I would lighten up on my pressure and make smaller marks so that they taper down and then wow. also that they're slightly uneven. <laughs> and we've got to do the same over here. You do? Yeah. We go and go and go and go and go. There's no end to it. All right. As above is... So yeah. below. In painting. Also in some religions, but in this particular case, it's just in painting. When I want to really kind of make these marks smaller, I just go to the tip. And the fact that this is kind of a bristly brush gives me that nice little petal stroke, doesn't it? It does. Feels like a little petal. The petal says, oh, yeah. You know, maybe sometimes the purple is a little bit lighter back. That's okay. Oh, I guess it was last week. Was it last week? It was, it, was, it was like a couple days, maybe a couple days ago. So you have to keep in mind, my astronomy news comes a little slow. We're not breaking news stuff. Well, one, he has to wait for us to be finished with Wanda before he gets to get his own time on the TV. Because <laughs> let me tell you what is not replacing what's going on with Wanda, some news, you know. And you know what? No. I didn't come remotely close to canceling my Disney Plus. Disney Plus one, it was more than enough. Mm -hmm. More than enough. I am enjoying my Disney Plus account. Yes. There's lots of little leaves here. Lots of little leaves. Lots of little leaves, you know, and you may want to come into your tree a little bit so that those textures go behind. If the brush starts to get dry and the paint isn't coming off nicely, you would just rinse it out and reload. Hmm. I do always with hog dry it off on a towel because hog can carry a little bit too much water. The reason I had like this particular line was that it was a mix of synthetic and hog. So it did it a bit less. But I think I found another line, so as soon as I test that, I may introduce it. You guys have some exact good possible replacements. The other thing to realize is that any hog will do this. Hmm. You know, you can go get a Simply Simmons hog bristle big brown and get this event. So you are okay. You can see I just make Ooh. different little marks as I go. Joni says, can someone ask her? I'm, I'm going to ask for her. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to ask Joni. Okay. Can we use a fan brush to make these? these? Yeah. Yeah. If you go look at my purple chair, I did a very, I did spike flowers. So that would be facing upwards the way you would do these facing downwards. And I thought about using a fan brush for it. I did. I thought about it. I gave it a good think. And then I thought, no, I really like the tear dropping petals of the wisteria. So I was like, I definitely want to continue that. But if you preferred a different petal. You could totally fan it up. And again, I would look at that, like how I did that. The patrons had one with that flower and I think some fans. And then uh, um, there's the purple chair. with hat. Now, Leslie wants to know, is it true? Do your hogs wear down? Your hogs do wear down. <gasps> they do? Um, sometimes brush makers will try to tell you that all brushes wear down in the same way. <laughs> Not true. But I turned my canvas to the side so that I could have an easier time getting to the top here. That's all I'm doing. Just making sure I'm having an easier time getting to the top so that what I have here feels solid. Oh my goodness, I can't believe we got through so your canvas, uh, especially less expensive canvases, are pretty rough, right? Mm -hmm. And um, what happens to your hog, because it's hog bristles, is you're brushing and scumbling and doing all the things you do. It breaks off. It splits off. It wears down. Um, your synthetic tacklons should not do that much, though, right? Like, like somebody was trying to say, oh, well, the brushes are wearing down. I'm like, you know, I paint with these brushes every single day, and I've done like 2,000 paintings with them, and they're not worn down. No, they're not wearing down. But on a hog, yes. 
on a hog. That is the true truth. All right. Now we're ready to go on to step three. Let's get a picture of this and microwave my coffee. Okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. He's going to microwave my coffee. So, yeah. Yeah, you could do that too. Coffee is maybe second. All right, I see that as reasonable, maybe, possibly. So, you know, uh, if you did the mountain painting with me here, I'll show you. From, I think it was last Saturday, right? These brush strokes are not dissimilar to what we're doing here. A lot of times this stuff carries over, it carries forward, it carries through. We kind of did them uh, a little bit on our hydrangeas. Like this stuff is like, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. So this was last week's painting. And you can see like, if you turn these upside down, kind of similar, right? Ah, shaking all the people out of the mountain. <laughs> That was fun, actually. You got to love those little moments when you're like, yeah, I'm going to shake the little people out of the mountain. Now, I do want to add some, what you see me doing sometimes is looking up at the painting in my screen because that's the same as to sitting back. But I don't mean to break eye contact. That's not on purpose. Um, we're going to come through and maybe add some of the little bright sparkling lights that we're sort of dropping through a bit. And then we'll start to work on our trunk. The trunk is actually what I'm personally kind of really jazzed about because I like really twisted, gnarled, woven, interwoven, twirled trunks. They're great for fairy. They're good for cottage core. They have a lot of personality in your painting. There's just everything about them is fun to do. So that's that's the part I'm like, woohoo, woohoo. And because it's twisty, gnarly, weird. You don't have to worry as much about being the perfect tree artist, right? And getting the perfect trunk because your trunk is so twisted. Hmm. You know, it's supposed to be twisted. You're supposed to be twisted. Let's all be twisted. For the next part, I'm going to use the same brush. Yay! And I'm going to just work in maybe a little bit of the sky peeking through, you know, the flowers. You can kind of see that a bit in the reference that there's this sort of peaking of, of flower, like sky through these flowers. That's lighter. And I want to also have that there. I thought it was lovely. We'll find out if I'm wrong. And it has some interesting little elements itself. Because it made some drippy drip patterns as well. Did you guys notice that? Mm hmm You know, it may end up reading just as lighter flowers, but I, I, I like the value changes in the background here. So I want to make sure that I capture that. I'm going to step back and make sure I'm getting that. Yeah. You know, that little value bit. Um, I think that little value bit is actually, I painted a lot of wisteria. And I feel like this is an important part of that because Wisteria can have such sparkling light coming through the vines. They just do. The way the flowers cascade and fall and maybe let little breaks happen. You can see I'll get into the blue sometimes. And this also kind of speaks to the shape of what's going on in the tree. Periodically step back. Make sure you're being thoughtful about where you're putting your light colors. This is one of those paintings uh, I could have done with the um, abstract paint and the frosting tips. I realized that after, like, I could have painted this whole thing with liners and frosting tips. <laughs> Super thick. And that could have been fun, too. But, you know, you've just got to, you've got to figure where you are and what's going on. So just letting some light peek through, maybe, you know. And I can always come back, right, if I'm like, oh, I don't want any there, and take it away. I'm not, like, stuck. But if I'm trying to get that glittering light, 
those values of that, this is how I would get in there and make sure I had that. This will also probably help with the darker, more saturated purple coming forward. We want to make sure that this back here is not that saturated. So can you guys see how these lighter colors are kind of mm -hmm. speaking a bit to that? And by doing the little petal stroke, I'll keep that feeling of flower. So it'll be like some of these have a little light coming through them, a little sky peeking through, or perhaps it'll feel a little bit like uh, a flower just got caught in some bright shine. Covers our background. Whoops. Table. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Little touches. The layers of a painting are what take it, you know, out of uh, the mundane and put it into the sublime, I think. Yeah. The layering process, the coming back and saying, you know, I think that uh, this is kind of cool. And since we're playing the phthalo blue and white against things, that also keeps it. There we go. So I'm just playing with those peaks. See, I'm just touching little touches. Mm -hmm. I'm going to move these around. I'm trying not to repeat patterns. I'm trying to randomize what I'm doing. I am doing a touch pull. Touch pull, touch pull, touch pull. The touch pull stroke is my very, very favorite paint stroke. That always reminds me of Legally Blonde. Huh? It always reminds me of Legally Blonde. The bend and snap? <laughs> it's the touch and pull. <laughs> <laughs> Comes back with a 97% effective rating in making leaves and flowers. <laughs> Sorry. I'm, I'm okay. It's been a weird Saturday. It has been. It's been a weird Saturday. I don't know what to think about this Saturday. I'm weirdly even pulling some of this down here. I think it adds a lot. You walked away. You I do. Me. I walk away. I walk away when I touch and pull. You cannot make me stay here. Make me stay here. See the oh, I like 2020 that. slash 2021 in song is these Bed slippers are made for walking. <laughs> bed slippers are made for walking. And that's just what they'll do all the way over that Zoom call where I'm talking with you. <laughs> <laughs> that's not it, is it? <laughs> <laughs> it just is. You know what? Nothing has changed for my mom and I. Even when we lived in the same city, we only ever caught each other on Skype. It's true. We would like totally plan things, but nobody could ever organize anything together in between kids and school and everybody's work. We weren't ever pulling it together. All this has done is justified my lifestyle. <laughs> yeah. I We're like, see? Proof I didn't need to leave the house. <laughs> All right. I think this is, I really like this and I feel like I like this layer. That's a good um, layer. It hit the impact that I'm looking for. I like, okay, it explain feels twinkling. That. So what I was looking for is the sense of light and twinkling and very soft value through here. And and as if light's pulling through, and I like that when we came over with a white and blue and kind of varied that up. And even down into the sky here, you see, I like this. Don't you guys like this? Like it's like, ooh, things have happened in the I can't even stop. Look at me, I can't stop. I can't stop the feeling. All right, I can stop. So this is good. <laughs> we're gonna call this the step. And then I think we're going to come back and start thinking about some trunky trunks, tree trees. Like we're, we're going to be like Dora the Explorer and we're going to paint the barky bark and the twisty twist of the tree tree <laughs> on the rocky rocks and the cloudy clouds and the flowery flowers. <laughs> if 
I have to tell you, if one talking fox wearing clothes comes in here to take any of my stuff, I'm going to let him have it. <laughs> I do not have the, I don't have the bravery required to overcome a possessed fox. I'm definitely, I mean, if you thought about that in non-cute cartoon terms, like if you were just sitting in your regular house, having your Cheerios. And a four foot masked fox walked came in, in and, and was like, <laughs> and you're like out like, of your house so quickly. You would be like, it is the end times. <laughs> you would be gone. Be like, well, Fox, <laughs> one of us is walking out of the room. And, and unfortunately, it's... I'm not guessing it's you. Right? <laughs> so I, I got to go. I'm going to keep going with this brush. I've enjoyed it. So on this first bit, I'm going to come in and I'm going to just take my black and my brown and just kind of speak to that there's an overall shape to the trunk, right? We got to get some paint on here. How much paint we got to get on here? A lot. Because the trunk do trunk things. It's got a lot of brown on it, which would indicate bark. And I, I look, I'm not much even better. that worried. Look how messy I'm being. It's so much better. You know, I, I think that the brown indicates bark better than the blue. Yeah? Yeah, I think that your choice to paint it brown is a good choice. I mean, I could have done it in blue. There's really very little you can say to me, like, I bet you could do it in blue. And I would be like, I, yeah, I can do it in blue. I'm, I'm, I'm not starting I could do pop. it in Yinmin blue. Start it. I'm... Start it. <laughs> Start it, punk. By the way, if you're new here, my husband and I are not in a fight. <laughs> We're just keeping each other good. We just give each other, like, fun moments. There's no real beef over. Uh, she wouldn't tell you if we were, though. I wouldn't. It's true. She'd, she'd just be like, I, see? <laughs> <laughs> I come from waspy backgrounds. We keep it in. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, there's some funny stories there of like craziness happening at my house and me answering the door like, can I help you? And, and like it's like insane behind this. By you in your background, like it's totally <laughs> like what you would totally expect from like a TV series. You know, like they open the door and they're totally calm and together, and then a pot flies by and explodes <laughs> on the wall as someone's screaming in the background. And they're like, "No, everything is just fine. What's going on? It's good. It's good. <laughs> good to see you. Have, haven't talked to you in a couple of days. How are you doing?" Marge. <laughs> Do you need anything? Do you need to borrow some milk, some sugar? Your neighbors are like looking wild eyed in the background. No, is everything okay? Everything is fine. I think my favorite is when you do all that, and then you're like, we're just moving some things around and maybe redecorating. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Okay. Some you. things displease us deeply. <laughs> <laughs> ah, my mom and I. The drama. I'm going to come here, and I will kind of bring some of this out perhaps a little bit to show, because, you know, it might have some. Let's give this like a little bit of a. These kinds of trees, they are, they are so cool, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I know I'm going to cover a lot of this up with leaves, but even having it there in the background will help it a bit. Come here and say there's this. Not really going to worry about that brown mark there. I've decided not to pursue it any direction. And knowing me, knowing me, knowing you, it's the best I can do. Knowing me, I'm probably not going to put another branch over here because I'm going to be heavy with the flowers. Heavy with the flowers. I'm going to be heavy with the flowers. How heavy with the flowers are you going to be? So heavy. So heavy. There's no telling how many flowers there's going to be today. No telling. Did this just <laughs> suddenly become a A tennis and play just fell on my head. We're, we're going to paint the flowers out here in the wisteria. I'm going to channel it, my inner Tennyson. Me. Tennessee Williams. Sorry, Tennessee Williams. Fraction. Choo -choo. By the way, don't, don't put your cats on hot roofs. That's not cool. <laughs> you should not do that. You should not do that. <laughs> People will come for you and say, don't. All right, so this is a very strange. You just got some brown background on the tree. Look at and it. talked about some nonsense. I have a brown 
sloppy bit of obnoxious nothing on my canvas, which is going to turn into your favorite trunk you've ever painted. Is this even a layer? Or is this, this just is a like layer. A sub layer. This is a layer. This, this ha- you can't layer? get to the next until this is on and dry. Does this um, justify a five? I might, but I want to make sure I've got just a lot of color on here right. so that when I come on with the next, it's okay. Hmm. I think I have enough. We'll see as we go, but this is this justifies it. Yeah, gonna, throw it up. Dry it? Throw it up. I'm gonna dry it. You throw up the number. We're good. Okay. There's this five. I'm gonna sip some coffee. Tree. She's gonna do that. A day. All right. While she's doing that, I'm gonna let her dry the surface there and have some coffee. I'll take a picture of this. Now, if you have some trouble buffering, it seems that there's some folks out there that are it it. It's not the connection here. It looks like we got a pretty solid connection, but there are some folks out there who are, some who are not. You make, you can check uh, in the little gear. Sometimes there's an option for you to choose the amount of buffer that you have in there, the length of buffer. Um, you can also uh, just set back about 30 seconds and have just a, you know build your own little delay in there, and that'll help smooth that out a little bit. Um, so. I don't know. I was we were we were talking about buffers. Buffers. And YouTubery and, and is is the YouTube buffing? Uh, some people are. Some people are not. So it seems to be that. At, uh, I'm gonna put out a little thalo green and cad yellow here because I think I'm gonna get into them a little, pretty soon. I gotta take a picture of that before you go on. Just yeah. don't get going. Tell I them. Just, what you're I'm not do. gonna get going. I'm putting out some. Uh, so what I have now on my palette, and we'll make sure that it's listed. Um, in the step-by-step mini book <laughs> at the beginning, probably. Ultramarine blue, thalo blue, doxazine purple, Mars black, burnt sienna, thalo green, Naples yellow light, also called titanate yellow, cad yellow, and quinacridone magenta with a little gloop of white in the center. I'm probably going to need more white, just knowing me. No. Oh, <laughs> you're like, click. You went switched. You were like, switch. Switch. I have the control buttons. You do. You have the control button. Boop. So I'm going to take a little of my black, brown, and white. More brown than that. I'm going to come off here and bring around. And I'm just kind of even looking at my reference a bit so that I can uh, really see it go. Because these things, they twist around each other. And you've got to capture yeah. the way that they do. <coughs> so what I'm doing here is I am kind of outlining and starting to speak about the twists on my trunk. So say this might go up here, and this might be its own little twist off here. This twist may come like this, and that one is going to come forward. Grabbing my brown thing. Ooh, it says no, I'm going to go in. All right. And then this one's going to come out. So we're just creating these little lines. You know, I can probably twist this a bit out like a vine. And I may twist this in a bit. We're going to twist so many times. That you're going to be like, how did we do that? I'm going to be like, wait. So I'm just twisty. doing the twist. Come on, baby. Let's do the twist. And then I'll bring that one back in. When I have that, I'm going to start coming through with just even my brown and black, my bird Santa and my black, and dry brushing in the directionality of what I'm looking at. This is challenging for you if you're new, is knowing where the twists are. 
So one of the things that the mini books or the steps do for you guys is you'll see this stage when it's done, and so you won't have to visualize. Right? That's one of the way one of the ways that that's easy, you know, helpful to you. Here. Come that way. I think I'm going to bring it back this way. And back into the black. The black and the brown are just right now helping me find value and shape. As I'm going. You know, I can exaggerate things far beyond, you know, sometimes what nature will even give us. Let me come around here kind of with a, I'll make like almost like a swirl there that might almost end up being like a hidey hole. Very rare is it for me to do a tree that doesn't have a hidey hole. And I'm going to break this tree down into these micro steps uh, pretty specifically. And the reason is, is because if you haven't done a bunch of these, the visualization of it is really challenging. black along there. Yeah. All right. Now I'm going to take a, a little of my yellow and get into my burnt sienna, my cad yellow. A little more brown. Again, this is just the start, guys. This is just how we're going to find the bark before we get into the bark. Mm -hmm. And I like to have lots of depth and color. Like sometimes I'll go more into the burnt sienna. But I'm just making sure that the outlines and highlights that are needed to show form are there. Now what's wonderful is this has a lot of gray into it, a, a kind of a blue gray, so we're going to be able to get into our ultramarine and our burnt sienna. And it's got a lot of green, so we're going to be able to moss it up. We're just getting, we're just finding our twists right now. Mm. You're just discovering where, where does the trunk go when it twists in the tree in the high, high breeze? Where does the trunk go? Hopefully right on your canvas and then on your wall. So I'm going to call this a step. And the reason I'm calling this uh, stage a step is so that you can see how I roughed out the twists with just three or four uh, tones. Yeah. Right? If I go much past this, it's going to be a lot to take in. And the next layer would confuse what happened on this layer that let the next layer happen. I'm going to dry this. I can't do the next until I dry this. Yeah. Just make sure you uh, thoroughly dry your surface before between the layers. Uh, don't use heat. Um, it can cause your paint to do all sorts of funny things, and, um, include delaminate, 
if it's a, a especially student paints because it can cause them to dry out and crack in weird ways. But generally, your uh, your your regular uh, acrylic paints aren't going to have as much issue there. But the heat can also make them soft and sticky. So you really don't want to use heat in general when drying your surface. So just use that; you'll be fine. Um, and just thoroughly dry. That way, you know you don't uh, muddy up your colors between there. Don't forget, check in the link in the description down below for in more information on stuff that we do. And nicely there, dried. There she is. To there talk I to am. While I talk, take a picture. Yeah, it's time to take a picture and put up a step. Step six. So in step six, we're going to start creating a bunch of different little bark values. So bark is a very living thing. I mean, not to state the obvious, but things live on bark, uh, in bark, around bark. It's very multi-tonal. The tree underneath it, um, not every bit of bark is in the same house. Some bark has moss. Some bark has, you know, been scratched by animals. Bark has a lot of personality. So when you're trying to paint bark, being able to capture that personality is a big thing of that. So there's going to be actually quite a lot of color in the bark. Okay. Same brush. Same brush. Sometimes I just want to paint an entire painting with a giant brush. <laughs> Sometimes I do, though. All right. Burnt Sienna and Ultramarine Blue make the nicest gray. Add a little bit of white to it. Kind of showed out. Isn't that nice gray? Mm. And I'm going to begin to make little strokes. I'm, I'm going to turn my mic up just a little bit. It seems Are like you? Yeah. I'm, I'm going to continue to make little strokes. Uh, sometimes they'll be more blue. Sometimes they'll be more brown. Um, sometimes they'll have more white. But we're going to start making these little strokes. And we've kind of already built some twists that we can stroke on top of. See how wooden, it's, this is how I get demonetized, guys. I talk about <laughs> stroke on the wood. And then all of a sudden, nobody will run ads on my video. Meh. This, that algorithm needs to be able to watch videos. It needs to put and the context like, oh, to And it'll be like, oh, wait, no, she's not that exciting. <laughs> put the context to the words. It's important. Con <laughs> context is important. So important. Well, sometimes in the brown here. You can see just a lot of personality, isn't it? Wood has personality. And you got to paint all of its personality. And I like the little sh short strokes because that kind of speaks to bark a bit as well, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. You know, and you can get back every once in a while. And it's just like the leaves. Yeah. You know, you can get back. You can look at how it's going. Just coming here and making sure we've got some little bark. Get a little more blue into it from time to time. And some of it may, I may come back and darken, you know, as I need to. But I just want to build up the layers right now. So the tree looks like... You know, there's so much motion in this when you get this correct, isn't there? Mm hmm You can get some black into it, too. Well, you know, they all work here. Maybe a little more brown. Right here, just kind of trunking that through. And then coming in with a lighter value, adding more white. 
you could use a bright bristle brush. And look, guys, this is not a precision instrument. Mm -hmm. Look at its crazy layers. This brush looks like I stuck it in an electric socket. Uh, many of you notice that some of the cheaper brushes you get in your packs do a lot of these techniques very, very well. It's true, they do. <laughs> that brush in your pack that's like, I don't know what's happening to me. That yeah. brush probably does a good thing. I'm sorry when I do the thing, like my head actually blocks where we are. Oh, that's right. Well, we have multiple cameras that can move around. Bring in some layers here. And we're going to have a lot of layers in this one. But that's not too bad because you kind of understand the construct of where the layers came from. You know, once you understand, oh, that's where the layers came from, then you're like, oh, that's cool. Hmm. Bring in a little blue here. Again, blue, brown, white. Ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, white. Makes this really fantastic weathered wood gray. You know, we've had all these great brown values that are kind of peeking up and through. So that's adding to the dimensionality, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Dimensionality. This tree's got dimensionality. Dimensionality. Mm -hmm. Dimensionality. You have dimensionality too. You can see how the dry brushing and the long, you know, the length of the strokes, the way sometimes they're short, the way sometimes they're long, these things all play a role, don't they? Mm -hmm. I can take a little of my green and my cad yellow in my burnt sienna. I dry brush some beginnings of some maybe some moss here. Look at that. Sometimes I might get a little more. Yellow in it. Mm -hmm. More brown. That's really adding some dimensionality. Dimensionality. And thank you to Donna for her for her support here in the in super chat. Thank you, Donna, for super chat. Thank yeah. you to all the patrons. Honestly, right now, guys, I want to say thank you to the patrons. Um, the patrons right now are helping preview some of the Acrylic April episodes mm -hmm. so that our formula and our formatting is the best for you guys. So they're literally being our sweethearted, very kind guinea pigs to everything that's coming up and helping me like actually make sure that the sequences of skills feel good and that the way it comes up. And I just want to thank everybody there too, because I really appreciate it. And I think it's going to make a better Acrylic April this year because of it. No, just... Super appreciate it. Come back in with, you know, maybe a little more brown. Trying to zoom in there on some of those. See, strokes. I'm just making little short strokes. Yeah. Because it has personality. Let me put out a little more brown. I just like to make sure that my trees. They are living beyond. Beyond, beyond the canvas. I want them to feel alive beyond the canvas. <laughs> beyond the canvas. I said it did the hair. I don't want it in my painting. No. No. A little bit of green and brown is always kind of a great... You can just tap this. See, I'm just kind of going along rough. Mm -hmm. No, you can be rough. Okay. I'm going to get a little bit more brown. 
touch, touching little bits here and there. And rinse that out. And then I think I'll let you guys get to here and then I'll do the last little layer on the tree in its own step. Uh, it may not be that much, but that way you guys kind of see how it goes from here to the finished, finished part. Okay. Okay. So we're going to do a step. I like it. This trunk is a like twisty. It. It's a I twisty it's trunk, good. isn't it? The trunk is twisty. Come on, trunk. Let's twist and shout. Yeah, I think we should. <laughs> the trunk is like, I don't know. Whatever you want to make of it. Whatever you want to make of your trunk. Uh, I love old, ancient trees. Um, there's some trees that are over 10,000 years old. And the park, it, the park and Forestry Service hides it from people because, of course, somebody comes and cuts it down. Right? Of course, they have to hide it. But there's a few trees out there that are in this crazy age range. And the twists and gnarls on their trunks are just so wonderful. And then there's some pictures out there of ones that maybe... Um, got hit by hikers or people that you know didn't respect the forestry service and kind of went for the trees anyways but they're a really beautiful inspiration now let's come back as in always and now whenever, it's the next, next step next step i'm gonna take a little black i can tip it with some brown but i really want it to be black and come here and speak to inside that I'm on the toe of my brush. Carrie says, you're being very musical today. I am being very musical today. I'm very musical today. I think what happens is, you know, you get in your studio and you get to work in and it's pleasant and adding some value down here. So what I'm doing here is you know, coming back with a little bit of deep value. I want to make sure that the twists are, are a little exaggerated. I'm just coming through. I know I've got a lot of painting and, 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 and here's what, there's going to be so many flowers over this branch. I don't know why I'm putting so much effort into it. Chances are a lot of it's going to go away, hmm. but the bit that will show will feel like it's part of this whole tree. And that's what's very important. We're just making sure that our twists, I know the way, twists and turns. While you're twisting, I'm going to say thank you to Andrina and all of our patron supporters. So appreciate it. Adriana. There we go. Look at me, mispronouncing <laughs> it's like words. You're, it's like you're yourself and you haven't been invaded by pod people. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we're kind of thinking about how that is. And you can see that that deepens mm -hmm. the trunk, right? It does. It does. It really, really does. And then uh, we want to make sure that we've got a little of our gray. I might come get some brown. I want to make sure that the hole here... You know, it feels like it's got something afoot inside. That's the goal. Now I can always get some weird yellow into this crazy gray mix that we're doing and even brighter highlights and a highlight. Look back at that and see if I like that. Mm. That should be giving us a very rough kind of highlight, doesn't it? It really does.
And then maybe back it off with some glue. Play, play, play. All right, play, play, play. Just trying to exaggerate the little knot in the tree that happens. This, this is where you touch it up. This is where you make sure that your bark is a mosaic of color. Not what you see. Not only reflects the beauty of nature, but in some way maybe is more than just the beauty of nature. I really mm. like that trunk. I love that trunk. I'm super happy with it. I'm you know, super happy with it. It's only trunk, got one last thing on it. Mm. That trunk is so impressive, it just dropped the leaves. Did it just drop the leaves? I'm going to take a little of my Naples yellow and my white here, and I'm mixing it into where I had cad yellow, I had some thalo green, and I had some burnt sienna from earlier. And I'm going to, I really want this to be quite light. Dapple just a little light on the trunk. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. There's this wonderful little bit of light that's maybe coming through the tree in a couple of places. And I would like to make sure. Oh, yeah. And our beautiful. Oh, that's it. Some highlighted trunk. That's the baby. Some trunk that's lights. That's the trunk I'm looking for. Thank you, trunk. You were a good trunk. And that'll do, trunk. That'll do. Maybe put a little right there. And that's just talking a little bit about dappling of light that could be coming through on your trunk. Okay, I'm good. Okay. That's okay. a step. That's a step. It's a step, and I got to change my water. You know what that is? And I it's need a, a coffee break. Step in the right direction. Is it a step in the right direction? Can we do a coffee break coffee and make a fresh break. cup of coffee? Now, listen, guys, on the coffee mm -hmm. break, you guys have to know for any pre peaks at the Acrylic Gabriel calendar, they are always being moved, changed, days are being changed, stuff is being shuffled, um, finished pieces, uh, uh, the patrons do see as they come out, but you know, it's always in a juggle. So just so you know, it's in a juggle. If you feel strong about anything, it can come back up on the calendar if it doesn't Give necessarily make the 30 days. Uh, hmm? I think that's it. Let me open this up and look at this. Is that do, one? Do, 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 Coffee. Do. Oh, I have, I have an acrylic April thing. Is that's what I'm talking about. Like, that's what so like the to calendar, has been already changed a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Patrons can tell you about it because they've seen it and they've been doing them and testing them and letting me know. So. Okay. All right. So I will go ahead and give you guys, I'm going to say the Sherpa. But show up because it's 30 days of free life-changing art. We'll be right back. Okay. Well, it's time for shameless self-promotion so that John and I can get a cup of coffee or do a little something in the middle of the show. I want to thank everybody who's here painting with us today. If you're really enjoying learning how to paint, I would love to tell you about a program I started uh, two years ago now. This will be our third year called Acrylic April. The number one thing I think makes people better at painting is painting more. And I know in my own life, when I did a daily painting challenge, it really helped me to unlock a lot of new skills and break through a lot of creative obstacles. So in that mind, in 2019, I said, oh, well, one way I can help everybody is to create a 30-day sequential painting program 
where each painting builds in to the next, helping artists improve their skills and overcome their creative blocks and frustrations. I'm so proud of this program and 2021 is going to be the best one I've ever done. I really hope you'll join me. It doesn't cost anything. I mean, other, other than art supplies, you got to go buy art supplies. Um, but it, it's not like it costs anything for you to join me. You just show up on April 1st. I promise it's not a joke. It really is April 1st. That's why we say it's acrylic April. It's no joke. And join me every single day for a small painting on an 8x8 canvas, broken down step by step, just like you're very familiar with, with all the extra resources that you guys have come to know and trust. You show up every day with me. We're going to be doing a story of water for 2021, which means if you start on April 1st and paint with me every day through April 30th, at the end of it, you will paint water better. And that's why we say to people, you can paint better in 30 days. Now, what happens when you do a daily painting is you overcome a lot of places that you get in your own way, because at some point you just have to finish. You can't, you know run yourself into the ground about being a perfectionist. You spend the amount of time that we spend painting. And when that one is done, you go on to the next one. And that one is done, you go on to the next one. But inside your inner artist thrives and grows and develops and starts to put together all the different techniques and how they relate to each other. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, there's always like one painting that frustrates everybody, one painting that's a breakthrough for everybody. The first painting freaks everybody out. There's tends to be a lot of excitement and anxiety, but I've got a lot of resources. We use the same colors every year, which is the colors that we've been using this year in 2021 uh, on the channel. We use a few brushes, which this year we will actually have all the brushes once the series is recorded and up to let you know which ones they are. But you guys remember, the magic is not in the brush, it is in you. And we will be able to come forward and you will see from this calendar, the general direction that we're going and how this is a story of water from the way that light plays across a still surface to the way that water plays with light as it runs down rocks it doesn't really matter water is kind of always the same personality i really think that you can do this i think if you can uh, do the time to join me it will be so transformational for you you can check out acrylic april 2019 well, that's where we're really kind of like learning how to do it. Check out Acrylic April 2020. That was such an amazing year, and it's all there to view now. There's already the resources on how to start a daily painting, and that's like 10 tips you've got to have. There's a color chart to help you get ready for every color mix that you can have. There's an amazing split primary color wheel to explain to you why we picked the colors that we did. There's a blog to break through all the drama I, I call Naples Yellow Gate that Naples Yellow has, but why I bother to use a color that would cause you guys any frustration at all. I mean, there's so many beginner resources. There's a group, Acrylic April, on Facebook where we share the stuff and all of our feelings and excitement and frustrations and just get together and paint every day. We even have people who've been painting every day since 2019. That's how transformational it is. So... I hope you enjoy this promo. Thank you for letting me get a cup of coffee because like John and I always need the break and I teach a better lesson when I coffee up, coffee up, and so does John. Yep. And I, <laughs> coffee, oh, coffee, coffee, coffee. Are you coffee. back from coffee? All right. So we're going to get back and continue teaching you the lesson that you're on. Please consider joining me for Acrylic April, even if it's just for one or two paintings. There's going to be something in April that you love that you need to do. Okay, let's get back to our painting. Well, I hope I've convinced you that Acrylic April is worth your time with my shameless self-promotion so I can get coffee. Let's be honest. I just I needed to get coffee. That was a coffee break. That was, that's a, that's a, what this was. That, it's a coffee break. It's a very justified coffee break because I can be like, shameless self-promotion. Yeah. That's but, like work, but yeah, it's a coffee break. But hopefully you guys will consider coming because I think it's going to be the most amazing Acrylic April ever. It is my dream to eventually build up a year's worth of daily painting content. Yeah. We'll see how that goes. I'm on year three this year, and it's like to kill me, but see how it goes. Now, we have we're Have a you already photographed? Here. I have. Okay. And you've stepped? We're a step now. We're a step. So step eight. So we're going to start uh, getting into the fun forward-facing flowers. You know what, though? Huh? I'm, it's, yeah, I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to fix it later. Shh. What's wrong? 
Nothing. Is my hair wrong? No, you're good. Everything's super awesome. No. No, it's not. I can tell. What is it? I made a mistake, but I'm fixing it. What did you do? You will never know. Oh, my God. Will you tell me what he did in the comments? Don't let him get away with it. You tell me. You tell on him. They will tell on me, I'm sure. Did they listen? I don't know. They, no, no, they didn't hear you make coffee. Wasn't that exciting? I made coffee. And then John said, how fast is the coffee? And I'm like, I don't know. It's as long as it takes. Where's the creamer? So not that life chattering. No. Now we're going to put in some more of the detailed flowers. And, and this is where I was like, you know, the thing about working way too hard here is that we're going to cover it up with a lot of stuff. Yep. Um, the first of these, I'm going to change brushes because I want to have some nice long lines going down. And I'm probably going to do a number, <gasps> either a cat's tongue or, or a number four artist. And I think I'll, I will do a short, short, short number four round. Okay. And I'm going to do green and yellow together as you do. And we're going to make a few very detailed. <laughs> you just keep going further and further down. <laughs> yeah. like... I know. I know I do. Oh, okay. straight lines are not my friend. We have cameras. They move. There we go. Nice forward facing bit of kit here. Uh, lots of yellow. Bring in a little yellow at the tip. And then even from there, make sure you're lightening it. What was that? Get some dark green. There's one of them. There's one, one. <laughs> one of these little stringy stems. One. We gotta do a grip of them across here. Some should be shorter, sh some should be longer, but you do wanna have a bunch of these green stems. Now these are the... Some uh, of your wisteria flowers will always be a little more detailed. And you can see the stem on them. And so it's just best when you're trying to paint this type of flower to have a few. Best is a strong word. A thing you can do. It is Sherpa suggested practices. <laughs> it's a Sherpa. Best is strong. <laughs> In painting, very rarely, you know, it's more like it's best if you don't set fire to your paint for any reason. That is best. But you know, and always, always best. Don't set fire to your paint. But you know, other things are kind of suggested. Artists are the way they are, so there's always one that proves that the rule doesn't apply to them. Yeah, yeah. But that's because art. Because art. <laughs> there's always the one who's like, I will build the biggest tent. That's you. You're always the biggest tent. Not to show off either. Just to, he just, just wants to know if it can be done. Yeah, it's like it's just like can we build a tent this big? I'm like we don't have to build a tent this big. If we're building skyscrapers, why not build one? So I'm trying to make some of these longer and shorter, as you do. And I want them to register as somewhat visible on the canvas. That's mm. another important thing. I think, think I'm fairly happy with this number. I've got four. I could do five to have, there's some thoughts that are odd numbers and are, are appreciated. So I could do one maybe over here. That's a little detailed and can end there. So we've got some different lengths of vines. That's important because nature does not, uh, you know, always give us uh, different patterns and different things. We gotta we gotta look for that stuff. If you go over the tree, it's a good idea to get into the yellow and the white, so that you can really see the vine as it comes over the tree. See how we did? Mm -hmm. So the vine's a little bit visible. Once the vines are in, 
right? Yeah. We're going to come in and I'm going to, I think on these vines, I'm going to use this number six round because these are more detailed. And now I will mix paints. So I might take the, the oxazine purple and my Quinn magenta together and come here and make a touch. See how those are much more detailed? Yeah. Tidy little flowers. As I come up, I will press harder on my brush stroke. This is a round and number six round hog brush. And I'm going to press harder right, as I go because the flowers would be bigger. Notice that sometimes I put a flower in front of the vine and making the vine three dimensional. Now I'm going to have lots of the other type of flowers around here. So you don't have to be too stressed about, you know, this line up here because we're going to fill that very much in. I do want to come in and get a little bit of my pink, white, maybe even a little Naples yellow together. I need to make a light color. I am coming through and making sure that these are multi-dimensional. So I might get a little more magenta on here. See how we do? They're not boring. And that lack of being boring really plays to our advantage because it'll attract the eye. There we go. And that makes an interesting flower. We will do other flowers, perhaps, with less detail. But by having a few flowers that we really work some detail on, I'm coming more with more magenta, where we're making sure that we're showing off. making a very spectacular, thoughtful flower. Isn't that gorgeous? It really is. we got to do it on all these vines. On all the vines. All Lots the vines. vines. My, 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 my. So many flowers. So many. so many. So many flowers. Come over here. How many of these we're gonna do is several of these the same exact uh, way? We got one, two, we got one, two, three, four, five of these exact kind of like same the, thing. These are foreground vines. These are kind of focal. They're focal. We're gonna do some more of our soft flowers all around that, but these uh, being in focus will make this feel. Those are the ones that really kind of gives it that. Yeah, that, gives it that personality. You know, you don't, and it's okay to like loosely mix paint. And kind of what I call the what dreams may come mm. <laughs> kind of paint technique where we just have lots of colors and it put it on there thickly. So this is a place where you could get a bit impasto if you wanted. You can get a bit impasto. You can get a bit contrasty. Oh, like I can put dark purple here. You know that is? Oh, and come yeah. back with some darker purple. Now 
Uh, by impasto, I mean thick, thick paint. Yes, thick paint, contrast, thick. Thick and contrast. Both. Okay, so. It's both, both. If you do get impasto with it. Yes. You might have to let it dry a little bit more between layers. Um, you, You'll have to dry it with a hair dryer if you want to paint over the top of these. But we're really going to try to uh, preserve around them a bit. So, um, you know, something to think about. We're going to try to try to get around them where we can. I'm taking a little bit of my Naples yellow and my quinacridone, which, as you guys know, is the jam color, right? The jam. It is the jam. Look at that. Well, let me get down there and see that jam color. That's nice. Isn't that fun? Fun, fun, fun. Fun, fun, fun. You know, sometimes you'll get some light color in there. And the green peeks through. And that's nice. It is. Is it on layers? So many layers. So many layers for such a pretty painting. And you're going to love it. I love it. No. Now, maybe on this one, it's a little more about purple, right? Maybe we come in with a little purple and white a little more, but darker, perhaps. And we'll put out a little more white because I have been powering through my white. Have you? Yeah. It's a, it's what you were saying earlier, uh, white and purple. White and purple. White and purple. You know, I may come in and add a pit, titch of blue to what I've got going on. Oh, that really adds a nice layer of color and drama you do want drama a little bit on the canvas i do sometimes we have to tell a story with a little bit of personality. Isn't that stunning? Yeah. I take a little bit of those blues and purples and... Again, it's the what dreams may come. If that movie is all, all true, I am hooked up with The Good House. Uh-huh. Because I've been working on it. <laughs> I've been doing the work. Did you grab both blues there? I did. I grab a little bit of ultramarine. I'll grab some phthalo. I'm mixing them up. You're mixing the blues. You do. You got to mix the blues. I might even get into some white here at the base. Okay. And that kind of, yeah, that vine is different than the pink ones, but it's kind of like the back ones a bit, right? Mm-hmm. And that's what we're doing is we're building up some dimensionality. Because the forward facing strokes are a little more involved. Here's another really pretty thing that you can do. You can take your yellow and a little bit of green and some white. See that? The yellow really adds a lot to that one. Yeah. A little bit of the green-yellow that's going on. 
that kind of will bring in some another layer. They are done mm -hmm. to the flowers. Oh, that just comes together, doesn't it? It does. And you got to remember as we play here that yellow is what? It's a contrast to purple. So where it's present, it's really going to pop, pop out. Yeah, yeah, pop out and come at you. Oh, I like this. I like it too. Yeah, I think I'm going to take this value set and bring it over here. So if you remember how we were playing, we'll just come with a little bit of blue, a purple and white at first. These are still touchable strokes though, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Haven't left that world. I've got a lantern with some other really realistic wisteria that you guys may like. That people have gotten some very good results out of. I think this could go in my purple room. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a room with purple. So I'm mixing, you know, my blues and my white. I do that. I get a little blue and white and I'll come in and Kind of work that in with the flowers. Doesn't that do a neat thing? Mm -hmm. Layering kind of over the top, giving those flowers some personality. You know, I can go quite light down here. Saying, oh, hey, it, was, it wasn't as dark at the tip there. And then maybe adding some lighter highlights on these petals up top. You can always get into the blue. And then of course, we'll come back with some yellow green in a minute, but we'll let this have we'll let it set for a second. Yeah. We'll do another maybe pink one sort of here and then we've got, you know, purple, pink, pink, purple, pink. So it kind of gives us some odd variants as well which we very much like. I'm taking my purple and my quinacridone again. Okay. Now, in chat here, I noticed some folks were talking about storing paint between sessions. Yes. And uh, wondering if they should put their palette in the freezer. No. Um, and the reason is that you don't want to put your palette in the freezer is uh, freezing actually damages acrylic paint. Uh, Golden and a bunch of acrylic companies have done a lot of work to make sure that your paint can go through a certain number of freezes before it begins to separate or coagulate and turn into cottage cheese. But for the most part, you don't, you don't know how often your paint's been through a freeze just in shipping yeah. or storage. You know, and not every acrylic company goes to that trouble to ensure their paint against freezing. So acrylic paint is very temperature sensitive. It behaves differently in hot, dry temperature as it does to cold temperature. Um, as you're painting with it, um, that's one of the things is you'll find that through the year, through the seasons, its personality really changes. Yeah. And again, it's super sensitive to that. So you want to be real careful.
two untouchable strokes up the vine. Yeah. You know, get those going. I'll rinse out. You know, we can always come in with purple. Had personality to it. I'm kind of mostly focusing the shadows maybe on the left side. And come over here to where I have the Naples yellow and the quinacridone. And white. Yeah. And that's stunning. Oh, yeah. Building it up. Mm -hmm. mm. That's I'm pretty loving awesome. It. Yeah. I am loving it. I do want to go ahead and go to the trouble of getting some green in here. I'm going to change my water out a little bit and get into some clean water and get into that green. And then it'll be and the then... last step, I think. Or close to the last close step. Close to the last Oh, it's right, because we got to put, put those top leaves in. we got to, yeah, get the top flowers in. But we're getting there. You are. I'm just getting my almost chartreuse green, this, like, bright yellow green. That's like that French new spring green. I gotta put up some more art themed posts soon. Weird stuff we learned about artists. <laughs> <laughs> I like to bring these colors in. I think they add something. Now I'm going to keep my um, flowers kind of high up over here because I really like the work that I did. So I may blend it in, but I don't want to take out too much of my trunk. And then I'll bring some things down here, and I'll probably, I don't know, I might. May, uh, I'm going to take my little brush here and make sure the tip of the branch is nice. Yeah. Make sure. I'm, you know, going to kind of also try to not take out my beautiful trunk work. Because <laughs> I worked hard for my trunk. Yeah. She works hard for the buck. So hard for the buck. It's an Ent song. <laughs> For the Entwives. <laughs> Just, oh my gosh. And two people got that joke. No, more than two people got this. If this tree were <laughs> an Ent, it's true. wouldn't she be lovely? Maybe she all be. the Entwives are gorgeous flowering trees. Well, if, they're, if anyone Ents their tree, definitely share them up with me. Yeah, Sean's always up for an Ented tree. This would be pretty easy to put a face in if you wanted to make it a fairy face tree. Not would not be a difficult journey. Probably put it somewhere in this space. Probably right here where it had the knot is where I'd get the face worked in. But you could have done a face in the tree. Mm-hmm. All right. We're gonna be moving on to the next step. You think so? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. All right. Those look lovely, don't they? A wisteria tree, by any other name, is still a lot of leaves. By any other name. <laughs> spring, spring, spring wildflower mountain. mountain. That's something like that. <sighs> good times, good times, yeah. Good times. Now, oh. we have some... Forward leaves, again, I don't want to take out the beautiful back work, so I have to be thoughtful. I'm going to get, uh, I think I'm going to stay in my bigger brush. I was enjoying this one for making these leaves. Yeah. If I have to switch to the six, I will, but I kind of want to see what this is like. At first, I'm going to just use a darker purple.
Say I'm painting on some blue I really like. Gosh yeah. darn it. But that happens, guys. You know, as you're doing your closer, more kind of considered leaves, you may take out some purple that you like. I mean, some blue that you like. I can probably put it back in. Here, I'll go like this. And I like a little less focused. Little blue and white, little turquoise and white coming through. So I'm still doing a similar thing. They're just a little more petally. Just grab white when I need it. You know, step back, make sure you've got a good look there. If you do, you can keep going. So as I go through, I will layer again. You know. I don't want to take out too much of that vine, so I'm going to be careful through here because I really want that one to show as its own vine. Maybe as I come through, I'll get a little pink and purple together, and I'll put some of this vine maybe kind of close to that other one. White. So these brush strokes are a bit like what we did in the back. Mm -hmm. They're still soft, but they're brighter and more vibrant in color, and that pulls them forward. Yeah, I see. Right. I really like this painting. I may not, you know, do too much, just a little bit, I'll grab some of my magenta there, I was just sitting on the palette, mm -hmm. and I'll work that in, and that's a nice line, see I'm being careful of the tree though, Yeah. and the vine I just painted. I want to come back with a little, oh. White and purple just to make this pink a little more engaged into the background. It's coming forward too much. But that knocks it right back. This is working. Yeah. Yay us. And when I put that last little bit of green yellow up through here in a couple places, it's going to be like, what? It's so pretty. It looks so good. It's going to look nice. Let's get some more fun colors. Now, if you were just not feeling the brush, could you get in there with your fingers? Oh, my goodness. It, you know, here's what. Uh, if you're at all worried about allergies of paint, the only thing I would do would be, like, put on uh, rubber gloves. But, yes, you could get in um, with your fingers. And I, and I mention that sometimes you'll see even Iris Scott wears rubber gloves. And that's because sometimes you can have reactions to the ingredients in paint. I've even heard of some artists using their toes. Yes, you can use your feet, you know, it's all allowed. Nobody, nobody, nobody took it away. All the rules say any that you need to do. Sometimes I I'll grab some blue and purple and I'll kind of work it into this flower here. And again, I'm just trying to... Come along and let us see a little bit the edge of the top of the tree, but not be overwhelmed by it. Mm. Oh. 
Wow. This is so nice. Pulling together quite well. I'm just kind of dancing around with uh, little colors, sort of making sure that we're a little integrated mm -hmm. here and there with what we have. That can be kind of nice. I'm going to rinse out. Now I might come in with a little purple and white again. Looking sharp. I'm doing, I'm implying that there's stuff happening here, but I really, really, really don't want to um, take out all my hard, beautiful bark work. Mm. So you'll see me being a little precious coming up through that. Precious, precious. Precious, precious, precious. I might get into my blue and white. Pull that through there. Might come back in this area. Getting touches of that color so that again, balance, balance, balance. Wow. I have and to say, I'm a, I'm a fan of the different, all these different colors and the yeah. layers. Why well, really we paint, right? Yeah. Well, that's why you paint. That's why I watch. Why. I like you paint for reasons, right? I like watching. I do. Bring kind of a bright one up here. And I think I'll, I'll pull it down, but I... Ashley says that the mini books and time stamps have been game changers for her. Have they? That is so good to know. I, it's just, it is an effort of love and I'm very grateful to be able to do them and the help I have to do them is just everything. Dee Dee says that uh, this tree is dripping with magical flowers. Drip. Drip. Like coffee percolating in the morning. That's so pretty. Take a little color up through here. Come back in. And I don't have to, you know, I can kind of let these be here because we did that fussy work. And we don't want that fussy work to go away. Come in and add a little dark purple. Touching it on one side. And again, big brush, got to rinse out. Got to keep it rinsed. Yeah. Any round brush, any big brush. Um, sometimes you'll see me kind of get into bigger brushes on bigger paintings. And the reason most often is, is that uh, if you do a very small brush, it greatly increases your painting time. Yes. So um, one of the things that will shorten your painting time is using the largest brush that you can that still gives you the technique and result that you want, right? Because if I did my smallest little brush, if I did a number four, um, the, the totality of the painting would probably quadruple. Mm. I'm almost there. And put out a little more cad yellow. Ooh, Ashley's put together a binder. She's like all of them printed and the grids and the traceables. And that's really cool. Post that up in group, Ashley. I'd love to see it. Oh, yeah. I would love and to see. So you guys notice we're going to have some printed versions of these available soon. Soon, soon, soon. Yeah. So you can, we're going to hopefully have some bound versions with some workbook and some. Acrylic. In and acrylic April will have the mini books. I'm getting that question in left and right, left and right, left and right. Yes, they'll have the mini books. And those. The mini books will release, I think, as we're releasing the videos. 
That's a yeah. That's how it's hope. looking. That's the hope. That's the hope. <laughs> That's the dream. Living I have dream. a dream, a song to sing. You, Gets you gotta, me through most anything. There's a painting in you for sure. <laughs> there is. It's interesting. I'm uh, as I've been watching you do your brushwork. It's been overlapping in my head um, how similar art is to like music and how important it is to practice techniques over and over and re re get that repetition so that, uh, you know, the hand knows what the eye sees. That's so true. Sometimes I'll grab a little bit of a light color kind of coming down and to tip it out. I'll grab a darker color. But it's important to do lots of lot. You know, what, as you do a hundred thousand little petals, you'll get better. You petals. do. You get a lot better. Take a little phthalo blue and white through here. Fun, fun, fun. Tell her daddy. Thanks for T-Burn. That's pretty cool. Now, I'm not so in love with this particular little weird twig out that I won't now get rid of it. So watch me go. Ooh, you could, yeah, Dee Dee was like, maybe you could do this. Q-tips. Um, yeah. You could absolutely do this with Q-tips, and I have a video that has millions and millions of views where it did. <laughs> wisteria tree with Q-tips. <laughs> I did. Wisteria tree with Q-tips. I think there's a rainbow tree with Q-tips. Yeah. You there's can paint a, any tree with Q-tips. There's some Q-tipping. Now, I would say, if you're going to do a 16 by 20, you might want to get some extra large buds, because it's a, that's a lot. Yeah, I would, uh, if I was going to do a 16 by 20, I would increase the bunches of Q-tips. I would increase the bunches of Q-tips. And I have Q-tip playlists, and I, I don't know, I have 50 Q-tip paintings, and they go back a while. I know they're everywhere now, but they go back a while. They go back a while. So you can find lots and lots of stuff. And we've done every willow tree. We've done sponging Q-tips. <laughs> we've done so many no brush paintings where we're like, there will be no brush. The brushless paint. They, yeah, we have done brushless paintings. Now, sometimes you can get your um, ultramarine and quinacridone together, too, because they'll go lavender as well. And then I'll get over into my purple. You can see what I'm doing is I'm just making sure that the darker, more focal leaves. And I am not, see, I just didn't love the tip of that branch enough to preserve it. Have a dream, a song to sing. I'm gonna rinse out. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at it, looking. seeing what I like. What do you like? What do I like? What do I not like? What do I want? What do I not want? And I'm just using that touch pull stroke. And then just kind of coming through and, you know, you got to layer in. Layer it in. Layer in the light. Layer in the value. Define the spaces. Oh, my goodness, I'm loving that. It really is great. Now I want to dry it, and then I'm going to do my last step of finishing touches. This is going to be a step? 
Is it going to be step, I think, because I want to add some green through here and I need to dry it. So we'll call it a separate step. That way you guys mentally know, oh, I've got to dry before I get the leaves in because we've been just going, going, going. We've been able to mix the colors the way we are because mostly they're harmonies and they're not going to gray out for the most part. So you've been kind of getting away with a lot. But now we got to dry it and come back with our green. Do it. Do it. Okay. I'm excited. This is going to be great. We're going to have it like I actually am. I think this is pretty now turning out to be pretty cool. I can't wait to see how the uh, the last little layer up there comes in this because this has turned out to be a pretty dimensional tree. Like, I think we would do the Ents proud with this tree. It's purple and nice. You, know, you could have a little unicorn picnic underneath it. I would. Right. Okay. So, shoo, shoo, shoo. time to step it. up. Time to step up. Sorry, I don't know what's up with me today. I'm just like, like I think I'm on a singing show instead of a painting show. What? <sighs> All right, here you go. I actually really like this painting, so. It was a weird start, but a wonderful finish. Weird start, wonderful finish. That's art. I think that's why uh, there's been a bunch of studies over the years done on the effects of painting and uh, mental resiliency. And mental resiliency and emotional resiliency are the ways in which we're able to handle stress and difficulty and change. And what they found is artists often have extra tool sets or plasticity, in other words, flexibility around those things. And I think what it is is because it's every blank canvas, who knows what is going to happen. And you can't just, you know, stop every time. You just keep going. You just, like, figure a way through. You come up with the technique. You... You work it out, you dry it, you start over, but you're always just moving forward. And I think that facing those challenges all the time are what help us get there. I think that's, that could be what it is. I'm not a scientist in any way or anyone qualified to weigh in on this, just, you know, full disclosure. Hmm. You have a YouTube show, though. I have a YouTube show and I have an opinion, so you heard it. <laughs> there you go. That's how it works. Apparently, nowadays. <laughs> so I'm going to take my yellow and a little of my green. I'm going to come through here. I'm going to tuck some leaves, guys. Maybe some green ones. Not through everything, but places. 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 And I may even turn my canvas to the side. Why would I do that? So I could get access to parts of my canvas a little bit easier. She She's wanting to make sure that I have a good, challenging end of the day. So she's going to throw that surface you all know, over the place. Uh, do we have any questions while I'm doing the endless leaves? Sometimes endless. with more yellow, sometimes with more green. <laughs> Let's see here. I'll check, I'll check the when I'm comments I'm When smaller. I'm coming forward and I'm making these leaves smaller, guys, yeah. I make tinier touches, just like with the flowers. They don't go everywhere. They go some places. Allison said the Q-tip painting is how she found you. I always love when people find me through the Q-tip paintings. Uh, I get asked by a lot of, like, servers, artists, like, how would you do the Q-tip paintings? And I'm like, because the number one thing that will convince a per person that they can paint is a Q-tip painting. Mm -hmm. It's like the whole thing, like, you're going to do that painting with Q-tips? Well, pfft, I guess I'll give that a go. Because it's the hardest part of my job is not teaching techniques remotely. That is challenging, but... You guys always tell me what works for you and what isn't working, and we can always get there. But the hardest part is getting you guys to agree to pick up the brush and try. That's the first painting. That's my big hurdle. If I can get you past that, pick up the brush and try, and you can successfully post something in group and survive all those first steps as an artist, then I've got you. And we're going to do a bunch of paintings together, and then eventually you're going to be out selling artwork. <laughs> yep. But I got to get you to do that first one. And that's why I love Q-tip and sponge paintings is because it lets me get you engaged. So same curve to the stroke here, you know, and I like to add just a little bit of greenery into these, not only because it, it makes them feel like, you know, thoughtful plants, but also because the colors are in contrast. And so they really pop in the, in the, in the painting. I'm doing my dark greens, and then I'm going to come back through with some light greens. And you can see why it was important to me to maybe not have um, a ton of wet paint. 
getting my chartreuse on, which is a lot of yellow, a little green. Right. On the toe, on the toe. There we go. And you can see that's just adding a bit of zzzz. It really is. Pizzazz to the piece. Chartreuse is powerful. It is powerful. Powerful with purple. And actually, technically, so here's a fact. Ask anybody, what's the contrast uh, color of purple? And they're going to say yellow. But what's the contrast color of doxazine purple? If you look at a real correct color wheel, um, it is actually, there isn't a direct contrast. You have to make it. It's chartreuse. Hmm. If you have a test, I just gave you the answer. Because <laughs> they asked that one a lot on tests. <laughs> Feel free. You don't even have to credit me. Just get the good grade. <laughs> I suffered for you. <laughs> Bringing that nonsense out. Ugh, reading everybody's stuff. So when you're working with Doc's Purple, it's not just about getting the yellow in there. It's about getting this yellow green in there. And I think it's just about where it is on the color wheel. Because sometimes people, you know, they do color kind of organically by feel. Yeah. But there are people who are very, very scientific about their color. Two milliliters of yellow PY 90 billion and I don't know any numbers. So I have to make them up. But I mean, and like, you know, there's a lady who made like this weird cube and you could figure out any color in the cube. If you could figure out how to make the cube go. And she was super scientific. And I was like, you know, if your mind worked that way, that would be so useful. My mind does not work that way. But just because my mind doesn't work that way doesn't mean I can't understand the value that something like that might have. I just like to tuck leaves in. I feel like I'm there. I think what it is now, I'm just playing in my painting because I'm having fun. You're just enjoying it? Yeah, I think we're there. Yeah. Yeah, we may be. Virginia feels like she'd like to take a nap underneath that tree. I feel like I would like to take a nap under that tree. A lot of what I'm doing this year is painting things in places that I wish I was. We've been all so trapped inside or under so much pressure or under so much risk and so much crisis coming at us from everywhere. And it's hard to know who to be in relationship to that, right? And so I'm just trying to help us paint windows into a world where we'd like to be since maybe the world isn't where we want to be. It's... It's my little dream. It's my little wish. I'm going to sign this sucker. What are you going to sign it with? I am going to sign it with my number one monogram liner. Yeah. And probably this color right here. That's a good color. Yeah, it'll show, but it's in the painting. I think I'll sign it along that. Well, mm, it's me. I'm going to sign it on the trunk. So when I sign a painting, I have to remember that my signature is part of the composition. And I don't want to sign it in a way that detracts from the hard work that I've done. But I do want it to be legible just in case anyone in the future is looking. So I try to do colors that are harmonies in the painting. They'll register, they're visible, but they don't draw the eye from the overall construct of what we did. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? It does. And I think we painted a very artful tree. I pull I my so monogram too. liner apart. And uh, I'm really proud that we did this today. Yeah. I am. So we'll timestamp this about the next 24 hours. The timestamp goes up. And that timestamp, what that does is it, it takes each step and it bookmarks it into a chapter that you can scroll over the play bar and find. We're doing those for video. We have not done those for past videos, but we're doing those for videos in 2021. And um, also, these pictures will become a step by step infographic for Pinterest. And. Uh, uh, seven to 14 days later, a mini book comes out that you can print out for free. And then eventually, as we said, we're going to try to do some brown, bound editions of these that are organized into some cohesive thing that you can have 
so you could do a collection of paintings. We don't know if it's a good idea. It might be a total failure. We're not sure. It's early days, right? It's early days. Early days. But we know that the mini books are helpful. So those are those are good. Yeah. All right. My blathering aside, I hope that you're well. I hope that the people you love are well. I hope things are good in your life. I cannot wait to see you on Tuesday where we're going to paint the most gorgeous, soft, wonderful, where's spring <laughs> that you need right now. It's just going to be a great sky and a great, just a great piece on an eight by eight. So that's like, we'll paint, come by and do that. Was it Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time? I'd love to see you there. I hope you'll come to Acrylic April this year, which starts April 1st. All of that being aside, don't forget to check out the website. Hit the subscribe button. Leave a comment if you have a question or you just want to say hi. It's good for the channel. And I like to know what you guys are curious about. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.